Hello and welcome to the complete P auger installation guide for your Mac Don header. P auger Draper upper cross augers are made at Parts ASAP's Combine World Manufacturing Facility. And let's just jump right in. Part one is pre-assembling the components of your P auger. Okay, well, let's start with making sure we've got everything. Fairly basic first step, but important one. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you have everything in your P auger kit to get started. So here's, uh, you can pause the video on any of the next three screens if you need to. Your main components are include those two augers, your center bracket, drive side bracket, idle side bracket, and the idler hub. Then we've got the hydraulic parts. You can have two thicker hydraulic hoses, one thinner hydraulic hose, one double-ended hose coupler, two smaller motor couplers, and uh, one small T-fitting. There is also a small elbow fitting that you'll find pre-installed in your P auger motor. And then we've got a resealable bag with lots of hardware. You'll have a bearing lock collar, and a whole bunch of bolts. Some will have lock nuts and some will have spring washers. Pause this to read it. You'll also be fine just following along. Okay, well, first make sure you've got those inside hubs on the inside of each P-Hugger well greased. Then we're going to take our drive side bracket. That's the one with the motor on it. Right, so you just want to secure that and then uh, just a pair of pliers will take those caps off. You are going to notice some of that paint's going to flake if you use pliers, so if you just give a quick, yeah, just sort of blow those off. And then those paint flakes won't get in your hydraulic lines there. And once we've got those off, we're going to want to put a couple of couplers. Uh, there's two in your kit that are like this. They've got a flat side, and that flat side goes down and into those valves. Uh, this is going to be how we're going to tie your P auger motor into your existing hydraulics on your header. So once you've got those in, you want to just go ahead and tighten those up. And this is the drive side. So from the cab, this is going to go on your left. Okay, well, once we've got that nice and secure, we're going to go ahead and install it onto the left-hand side auger. And you can tell the two apart because the holes at the end, you'll see them here in a second, the holes are closer to the edge. So that one is the left-hand side auger, and that's it also matches with the diamond plate that's at the end of the motor and bracket assembly. These are the smaller bolts that have the spring washers on them. So they're going to be smaller than the other bolts in your kit. You have to tighten them. Because of the uh, the bracket and motor assembly is a little awkward, so you're probably going to have to spin it around a little bit just to get at everything. Some you'll be able to use your power tools on, and some you'll just have to do by hand. So, um, But once those are all secure, we're going to do something similar on the outside of the right-hand side. As you can see, the four bolt holes there are much closer to the center, so that's how you tell that one. This is the idler hub shaft. So this goes on with... Uh, the half inch bolts, most of the bolts in your kit are half inch, with again the spring washers. And those are going to be a lot easier to put on. It does say torque to 45 foot pounds. Uh, those are correct, but uh, it also just has to be tight. Uh, if you're not using a torque wrench, that's fine. So now we'll want to make sure that the center mounting bracket, this goes right in the middle of the header, we want to make sure it's well greased. So there's, as you can see, there's some zerks right at those shaft joints. So just get the grease gun in there and uh, go to town. It needs a lot of grease. And once you've got a couple generous dollops of grease in there, you just want to move those shafts around a bit and make sure it's all spread around. And that's pretty much it for assembling our components. Uh, next, we'll want to actually go ahead and install that center bracket. So you'll want to take that center bracket that we were just working with. This one and this one. The difference okay. goes on back side. Yeah, so as G2's pointing out there, the one side is, is a little bigger, a little higher up, and that larger side is going to go towards the back of the header when you're attaching it to the mounting brackets. And we should just mention here, uh, make sure you've got the pickup reel up and install some safety stops before installing all these components. And if you're going to walk on the drapers, make sure you're either along the back line or the center line. Okay, so there's these brackets here at the center. We see we're on the right-hand side from the cab. Uh, Left-hand side to G2, but right-hand side from the cab. And it's these longer half-inch bolts. You only have two of these. They're a little longer, and they'll have the lock nuts with them. So you just want to attach those and secure them up. Great. Only Emma of their side. Yeah, so as G2's pointing out, the left-hand side one from the cab stays empty. Now we're in part three, we're going to install our right-hand side idler bracket and auger. So we're actually going to lift the P auger from the right-hand side onto the header. So G2's just grabbing the bracket there, 
and that's just going to bolt on to the factory mount at the end of the header. Okay, now you can lift uh, these P augers onto the header with just two people if you want, but uh, if you have a lifting machine it does make it a little easier, that's what we're doing here. Uh, so you just want to move it up and over, and just so it fits, should fit right in between the center and the end there. And then you want to get on and move it into place. Okay, so now that hex shaft that comes out of that center bracket, we're going to want to put that into the hex hub that's on the end, the inside end of that piaga. Remember that was step one, we made sure those were greased up. So you just want to make sure that slides onto that. And as you slide that hub onto that shaft, you want to make sure that you're also lining up the two holes at the end of the piaga with the grease zerks that are right underneath them. So the hole on either piaga that is closest to the center, that one is going to be to grease those center shafts that we just greased up at the end of the last step. And the other one is to grease the hubs. That was the first thing we did. So just to make sure those are both well greased. So uh, you're continuing to slide that onto the hex shaft. Now make sure you do leave about an inch space, just so it all lines up correctly. You'll see G2 here is going to move it a little closer. Yeah, and he's also going to make sure those zerk holes are lined up. Uh, next we'll go to the outer end. We're going to install that end bracket that's going to hold your shaft in place. So that's going to be the one that has the collar on it. So you're going to want to slide the collar on there. And those two, those two larger bolts there, those are going to be pre-installed. So you won't have to worry about those. What? Although we are going to have to tighten them in a second. So yeah, you'll have to get those lined up. You may have to use a rubber mallet or something to uh, get them lined up well. And then these are again, just half inch bolts. You have four of these half inch bolts with lock nuts. Just make sure both holes, there's one at the top and one at the bottom. A little hard to see the one at the bottom here. But just make sure they're lined up and then get those bolts through. They go different directions. One goes one way, the other goes the other way. Just tighten them up, again, torque specs. Not essential, but those are the official torque specs. Great, so you're gonna see that's gonna be on there like that and you'll just wanna slide on that lock collar that was in your uh, hardware bag. So we just wanna get that on there and then we want to tighten up the set screw on there. It's a little set screw and that's just going to lock the P auger shaft into that collar and hold it in place. So once you've got that, then we're going to tighten those. We leave them a little loose, they're going to come a little loose, just so you've got some room to maneuver it, but then you want to tighten them both up. And then that's the right hand side, the idle side, installed. That side's done. So now part four is installing the other side. So we're gonna take the left-hand side, that's the side with the motor, and we're gonna hoist it up onto the header. Again, two people can do this, but a uh, lifting machine sure makes it easy. Okay, so you just have to line that up as well, similar to the other side. Okay, and then once again, you're going to want to start at the center. So just make sure that it's on that hex shaft. Make sure you're leaving that inch or so. You can see it on the other side, about an inch or so. Um, once G2 has that lined up, it'll work out to about an inch. And make sure you're also lining up those zerk holes. Okay, and then you want to line up that drive side bracket. So the bracket from the kit with the mounts that you see at the end there. Okay, so once you've got that in place, same as on the other side, it's going to be two half inch bolts. Make sure you get everything all lined up here first. Again, rubber mallets, your friend. And again, these are gonna, yeah, run in opposite directions. G2 here uses a punch just to make sure that they're lined up. And then we wanna tighten up these bolts again. Then your left-hand side is installed. Both sides are installed. All that's left is to install the hydraulics. 
Okay, so you want to bring over the two hydraulic lines, those thicker ones, uh, the coupler, the large one that's double-ended, and a bucket for the hydraulic fluid, because this is going to come out of there. It is in full difference. That one goes to the pump. This one goes to the... Yeah, so as G2 points out, it's the smaller end that's going to go onto the Piauger motor, and then those larger ones are going to tie into the overall hydraulic system on the header. So we're just going to attach the hose on there and tighten them on. Both hoses are the same. So just make sure those are nice and tight. So now we've got the hydraulic hoses hooked up to the motor. Now we just have to hook it into your header's hydraulic system. So as G2 is pointing out here, if it's hooked up correctly, the auger will run counterclockwise. All that's going to happen if it's hooked up backwards is that the auger will run backwards. So here's how the hydraulics from the motor hook up. That top line, it's in red there, is going to connect to the canvas drive motor line. So that's what's pushing the canvas. So you can see there's the connection there in red, and it's attached to, in blue, you can see that 90 degree attachment. So we're going to take that 90 degree part off and we're just going to replace it with the top line, the hose from the top line from the P auger motor. There you see there it's hooked up and that 90 degree piece is disconnected. So now we want to take the line from the bottom of the motor, there it's in blue, and we want to take that and we're going to connect it to that disconnected return line. So that one has the coupler, the, the two-ended coupler. So we attach that, attach it all together, and then that completes the circuit and the hydraulics will come back into the system. Okay, well we've seen it according to the diagram, now let's see it in real life. We're going to start with the bottom hose, the hose from the bottom of the piauger, and we're going to grab that double-ended coupler and just make sure that that's on there tight. So this is the bottom, the return hose is going to get that double-ended coupler on it. Just make sure that's all snugged up. So we're going to get that, set it aside, and the first thing we're going to do is work on that yeah, right here, this uh, canvas drive motor. So you want to disconnect that 90 degree fitting there, and then make sure you have now the hose from the top, that's in G2's hand there, that's the hose from the top. So no coupler on that one, just the hose from the top of the motor, the drive line. You want to attach that onto the header, onto the header hydraulics there. And then this is the one with the coupler. So that's from the, the return line from the bottom. And the bottom goes into the 90 degree return line there. And that's it, that's the whole circuit. Then your P-Auger is tied into your header's hydraulics. Yeah. And again, if, you've, if you happen to have hooked it up backwards, it's just gonna run clockwise instead of counterclockwise. It won't work as well, you'll the, be able to tell. And go back, go down to the canvas motor. Yeah, so we'll just make sure everything's nice and tight. And it's a good idea typically to uh, to strap everything up and out of the way, just so it's out of your way. This is probably as good a time as any to tell you all about Combine World Manufacturing, a division of parts ASAP. We also make other products for your Macdon header. We do make the Draper drum. It's a thinner, heavier duty replacement auger drum with no slip clutch and longer fingers, more aggressive flighting. We also make a paddle finger for the Macdon. It's called the finger and it uh, doesn't need any ties or clips. It goes on exactly like factory. So at the end, it's a paddle finger, and at the top, it goes on exactly like a Macdon factory finger. So just two of the products we have were Macdons. Great, so everything's hooked up and out of the way. Now all we have left to do is the hydraulic drain kit. So we're gonna start by removing that plastic cap, and then we wanna hook up that thinner hydraulic hose, the two thicker hydraulic hoses we just installed on the motor, and this is where the thinner one goes. It's for the drain kit here. So we get that on there onto the elbow fitting and then we just tighten that up. We have a complete video. If you uh, have an existing P-Auger that didn't have a drain kit, we have a drain kit install video as well. It's an entirely separate video on just this part. So now what you wanna do here is you wanna unhook this hydraulic line from the uh, header drive. Then you wanna install the T-fitting on there 
You can either install the T-fitting onto the factory fitting, or you could remove the factory fitting and install the T-fitting in its place. Entirely up to you. So then we reattach that factory uh, header drive motor line that we just unhooked into the T-fitting. And then we hook our line from the end of the P auger motor onto the other end. So then both of those are now hooked up to that one line. Then all we have to do is just tighten all of these up on either all three ends of the T-fitting. Just make sure everything's nice and tight. And then that's it. That's the last step. Your P auger is now installed. The first time you run your header with your P auger, you want to turn the hydraulic flow to the canvas and the P auger off, and then engage the header. Then you want to slowly increase the flow and observe how it's working. And that should be it. Just check for leaks and make sure you keep it greased. Well, congratulations on installing your P auger from Acton. You can see our website for an installation manual, a printed one if you want, or to see about replacement parts. Now, if you do buy the P auger, you are under warranty for one year, so before placing any order for replacement parts, please check with us. If you're within that year, you should be covered. If you're watching this just to check it out, you can order your P auger on our website or call 1 800 667 4515 to order. All right, thank you.